out there. I'm Talonhawk, and today I have a video, one on Thrall gameplay, and two on uh, how the competitive ranking works with the new expansion on Heroes of the Storm. And as you can see right now, I have picked Thrall, and uh, my team that I have, which is on the left-hand side, they're kind of predetermining who they think they want to be, so we can get an idea of what we want our makeup to be. Now, it can or cannot change depending on what the enemy team picks. So, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of one of the phases that, and a lot of players kind of really need to get the feel for what picks are best for the picks that the other opposing team is making um, to to make a, an appropriate counter. Another good thing I think about this is that it's going to probably break a lot of the builds of some of the characters. And I can see that really pronounced proficiently on uh, Stitches, who I really like to play a lot. I've been playing a lot of Thrall lately also. Which, for me, him, that doesn't change too much. But for Stitches, it's really, really altered my gameplay. Or, not my gameplay, my build styles. Where I've really been adjusting him a lot to how the team works out. You will see, now we have our team fully picked. Anytime you're ready. And so does the enemy team. It seems to be pretty customary where there's only one melee DPS. Anymore and that seems to uh, not work out too good. Anyway, to start off, um, I'll give you a quick overview of Thrall's abilities. Uh, his first one is Chain Lightning. And his base ability blasts three targets. And then he has a Feral Spirit, which uh, damages and roots any enemies that it hits in a straight line. So it's a skill shot. And then his final talent is Wind Fury. Once, once you hit it on his E, it increases your attack and your move speed. And then uh, his special is Frostwolf Frost Resilience, which when his ability is cast, you can see on the lower left-hand corner by the portrait, there's a little silver emblem. Every time I cast an ability, it'll charge up. And on the final one, which I think is the fourth or the fifth one, it'll give me a small heal. In this particular build that I'm showing you today, it is my, it's a, it's, it's a late game Wind Fury build, it works really good. Sometimes some of the things I forget about when I play Thrall is when I get back in the early game that I need to be careful. Or that happens, which isn't good. Like I said, this build I'm showing, it's a late game build. Once it really starts to shine is at level 13. And that's when you start getting a lot more sustain. Yes. But early game, I'm back up. Never fear. Thrall is back. And so for my tier 1 talent, or my level 1 talent, whichever you want to call it, I went with Wind Shear which reduces the Wind Fury cooldown. Which should make sense inside for a Wind Fury build. It's a, it's a kind of a Wind Fury tanky build. And uh, once I hit level 13, it, it gets really, really good. And uh, another thing, I didn't fail to notice, but I didn't pick this up until a few of my uh, ranked matches, but it tells you the map that you're playing, 
and I didn't know that the first few times, so if there's anybody out there who's playing the game, and you're starting to do rank matches, and you don't realize that, it's, a, it's up there at the top. There we have a curse spawning, and we are going to go up there. We're going to get that curse. We're going to be so on that curse. They don't even know what's going to happen. Now it's 2v4, it's in our favor, 2v5, it's not a way you want to start a match. Give me your stitches. No, 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 my favorite here, why don't you go back? Why don't you go back? Oh, you like Tychus? Here. Here, we'll help you out. Oh, stitches? We like stitches. Especially like when I start going for perks, stuff like that. I almost only use my E. Uh, I'll use my Q sometimes, but I try to kind of save my W. Because I'm really trying to burst something down just in case the enemy team comes behind us. In this match, the enemy team is uh, not very coordinated. There's a lot of early engagers. They engage too heavy. Their uh, stitches are really good though. There you see many, many deaths of my uh, result of stitches. And here's my level 10. For level 10, with this build, either ultimate's fine. Uh, one of them is Sundry, which you make a Sunder, kind of in a straight line, which damages and temporarily stuns enemies. And the other is Earthquake. And in a, if you have a good team of sticking together, and you're doing fairly well in your team fights, Earthquake is really, really powerful. As you can see right there, I used it. You see how slow the arena could not get out. I didn't 
get it, I head back out because he didn't keep us engaged. It's not worth a death. Plus, my other team was already down here getting the boss. So I was kind of trying to stall them a little bit. By the time they realized what's going on, they have enough to where they can feel engaged, whichever came first. I don't know. It was too late. The boss is ours. Got a fort and a base. Do a pretty good push. Now level 13. Like I said, this is where the build really starts shining. This is where we get our survival build and our things. Grace of Air, our uh, One Fury grants Double Frost Wolf Resilience. So, that means we get our heal and our mana region a lot quicker. And it also makes our E very important to start hitting, which is going to be our primary ability anyway, so it's fun. I'm out of mana, so I'm pretty much saving every ability I can use as my E. Because that's where I'm going to get my region. Vala saw his bait. He's trying to get out of here. He's just too close to the end. Maybe he's trying to keep me up. He tried to uh, run out by using my E for the speed boost. Didn't work. It didn't work. You can see right there. It didn't work. I'm dead. Here I am doing pretty well on damage. Hero damage. I haven't done too much siege. Uh, Thrall can be a very bursty melee DPS. At least this build is.
good on the kills. My damage is okay. I'm not sure how I really feel about uh, going solo after just the damage counter when it comes to hero damage. Because bursty characters get a lot of kills, but it's because they're able to burst so quick, so they don't get a lot of total damage because there's not a lot of heal, stay alive, back and forth. Like uh, Nova. This build with flaws kind of like that. Zeratul. For some examples. For some of my other DPS characters that I play will have a lot more damage. Because I have to hit more because stuff's not dying as quick. But we're back for another time. Shields to your allies when you hit your 
hero ability? I don't know how I really feel about that. Doesn't seem like it does a whole lot. I may be mistaken though.
here we go. Final push. Wish you all the best.